Hi, my name is Alan Smithson, and I'm going to walk you through all the cool stuff that I see on a weekly basis in XR, virtual, augmented, and mixed reality, and I'm going to call it the XR Show with Alan Smithson. This is going to be my weekly show to show everybody everything that I think is really cool and awesome in this industry. So with that, let's get started. I uh, want to just first tell you that today is January 18th and I'm going to be going to you live on all the different podcasts, so uh, LinkedIn, um, YouTube, Facebook, so you can follow me on any one of those, but if you really want to subscribe, go to youtube.com and you can follow me, Alan Smithson, and let's get into the show. All right. So first thing I want to talk about is A. Artillery's Intelligence. This is uh, a group out of the States that looks at the whole AR ecosystem and comes up with predictions and uh, really where is this market going? My good friend Mike Boland uh, is behind this and he's a genius when it comes to this. So let's take a look at what they're coming up with. These numbers here, by the way, are some predictions. So take them with a grain of salt, but they're, they're pretty accurate in, in terms of what I've seen out there. These are tempered with a grain of salt. So head-worn AR revenues. So if you look at where we are today, we're about $2 billion, $2,000 million, $2 billion in 2021, going up to $13 billion by 2024. That is a lot of money, okay? $13 billion just in AR glasses, okay? So head-worn AR revenues, we're gonna see 13 billion by 2024. Consumer AR glasses, now this, to, this is the one you have to kind of take with a grain of salt because it, it anticipates Apple launching their glasses in 2022 and then growing dramatically. And if you notice, everything in red there is Apple. And so make sure you take this with a grain of salt because really, let's be honest, we don't know when Apple's gonna do this. So if the entire market here is based on Apple, let's just uh, make sure that we take that into account. Now, what can we expect in 2021? 2020 was a crazy year, we all know that. It got crazy. So let's just take it with a grain of salt, but here's some overall predictions. What to expect in 2021? We can expect AR's attention and scale will mostly reside on the smartphone. There's seven and a half billion devices that we that can do 3D, and about five billion of them can do AR. So expect to see lots of AR on a smartphone. AR glasses are already creating value in enterprise settings. AR glass revenue is going to grow from 822 million in 2019 to 13 billion by 2024. Smart glasses could broaden the connotations of AR and by smart glasses, things like Google Glass and there's a couple of other ones where you're just getting heads up display information about uh, what you're looking at. And Apple's V1 glasses will evolve over several generations like the iPhone, it will just get better and better over time. And then rather than graphically rich glasses that get sleeker over time, he's estimating that the reverse uh, evolutionary path will prevail, meaning they're gonna be sexy and then they'll get more functional as they go. So that's uh, Mike Boland's predictions from AR Artillery. Make sure you check him out, artillery.co, and you can get all the inside scoop there. And uh, sign up for a pro membership and you'll get everything, all of the, uh, the goodness. Next, we have Rokid has announced at CES their new glasses here. They have a 40 uh, degree field of view, but what's interesting about these, they also have SLAM or simultaneous location and mapping, meaning they can create uh, AR in a space from one RGB camera. So that's pretty cool. And Rokid's got, uh, you know, a good backing in China. So we'll see what they come up with there. They've got some really cool concepts. So the next one I'm going to talk about is Lenovo's Think Reality, and what they've got here is their A3 Think Reality, and uh, they've created a video here. I'll show you the video. Not really showing too much of anything other than the fact that it has to be plugged into a computer. So they're showing here some ideas of expanding your screen, but with a 50 degree field of view, I'm not sure how much of your screen you're actually going to see, so I'm not sure. There's no details around this, so let's just wait and see what uh, what comes out of Lenovo. Really excited about that. So with that, we're gonna look at something that is really experimental. This isn't on the market, but a company that I got uh, a chance to visit in Switzerland called C-Real. And what these guys have done is they've created light field, true light field AR, and it's super cool. Uh, when I saw them, it was like the box on the left there was a giant box. You could look through a tiny little window, and it was really amazing. But uh, one thing that they have going for them that nobody else has is they have real-time depth of field change. So when you look at something in it, in the 
you know, for ground, it turns into, uh, it, it becomes in, in um, uh, sync, it becomes in, in vision, and it's really incredible. When you look at something in focus from far and then switch your focus, it's really something to behold. So I wish the guys at all see real. Hope you guys have a good one, man. Uh, I wish you all the best with that. Next we have Panasonic has invented uh, a driver version of AR. It's like a heads-up display that's using, uh, you know, camera, I guess cameras on the outside or lighter scanners to give you real-time heads-up display information about what's coming at you. Whoa! And, you know, this is really cool. Sudden vehicle warnings, bicycle lanes, changing lanes, where gas stations, this is a really neat concept. And I hope car makers uh, start to implement this a little bit more, not just in the super end cars, but or the super high-end cars, but also in just everyday cars because this is really awesome. All right, so next we have uh, a really interesting thing in VR. It's not AR, but what it is, you can actually put your headphones in. I'll, I'll put all the links to everything here in the YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on uh, LinkedIn or whatever, I'll put the YouTube channel in the description of the YouTube channel. You will have all the links to everything that I'm showing here so you can go and, and take a look. But look at this. So as you go through this concert, they've set up all these microphones and you can actually go through the concert and stand next to the violins or stand next to the cellos. It's really, really an incredible experience. I strongly recommend you try it, but make sure you put headphones in because it doesn't, it, it, speakers do it no justice, but really, really neat stuff. All right, next on the show, we've got to show uh, something that is a little bit more business oriented. Um, Harvard Business Review just did a study and they looked at how companies are using VR to develop employee soft skills. Not hard skills like how to build something, but soft skills. How to deal with employees' emotions, how to hire people, how to fire people, how to you know really uh, dig into these soft skills. And the key learnings from this is that today's companies are facing a growing soft skills gap. Out of 300 learning and development leaders across a variety of industries, two-thirds of respondents had already implemented VR soft skills training or had planned to in the next two years. And customer service training is a big one, as is developing presentation skills and employee evaluation. So you can check it out at the Harvard Business Review. So you can see this technology is really ramping up across all industries. I'm really excited. <clears throat> this is the next thing I'm going to show you is actually from the Metaverse engine. It's the uh, engine that we make and uh, Metaverse is my employer. I am the CEO of the company. So please, you know, all uh, I, this is my show. And um, I'm really excited to show you this because what we're noticing is that people are starting to use not just AR and VR, but 3D on all devices. And so I wanted to show you this quick video here of a Mercedes Benz and what it is is a 3D representation of a Mercedes-Benz in super high resolution, all running on the web browser, delivered to smartphones and tablets and computers, and there's no need to download an app, you know, and it works across everything. So the great thing about this system is that you can create these configurators in a few minutes using our system, and you know, the Metaverse engine is truly powerful, I'm telling you, it's amazing technology for creating these fantastic uh, you know scenarios where you just want to show people all the things that your product has to do inside outside with stunning fidelity so as you can see it's photorealistic and you can get up to a million polygons 100 megabyte files all delivered over the web so I want to say uh, first of all thank you to everyone at Metaverse I want to say thank you to my team for giving me the uh, the wide berth to make this show and make it happen and I'm really excited to, uh, to tell everybody about it. So you can sign up for Metaverse at metaverse.com slash get started or get dash started. And Metaverse is spelled M-E-T-A-V-R-S-E. -E, and there we go. So uh, if you wanna do something else, if you wanna try this on your phone right now, I've put the QR code on the screen here and you can actually uh, scan it with your phone right now. And you can try that Mercedes-Benz experience on your phone right now. So I'll leave it up for one, maybe five seconds, four, Three, two, one. All right, so we're moving on. And I just wanna say another huge thank you to everybody. 
Um, this is one, you know, kind of episode two or one of the XR show, and I'm really excited to bring this to you every week. Uh, it's a lot of work to pull all this together, but I hope you enjoy it. And again, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and share it with your friends in the XR industry. Let's get the word out that XR is awesome and amazing. And I want to say thank you to everybody. And this has been the XR show with your host, me, Alan Smithson. Thank you very much, everybody. Cheers. Ah! <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs>